And thank you for listening to Utah Public Radio. Up next, it's our weekly movie review. Here's our film critic, Casey T. Allen. After watching the new release, Killers of the Flower Moon, in theaters, I kept thinking of a quote by the writer James Baldwin. People are trapped in history, and history is trapped in them. Adapted from the 2017 nonfiction book of the same name by David Gran, Killers of the Flower Moon explores the premeditated, systematic murders of dozens of Native Americans living on rich oil reserves in the Osage Indian Reservation of northern Oklahoma that happened mainly in the 1920s. These murders catch the attention of leaders in Washington, D.C. at the time, and a team of FBI researchers show up in Oklahoma to uncover the force behind the murders. Given that Martin Scorsese is the director and co-screenwriter of this, I was expecting Killers of the Flower Moon to have a violent, complicated, emotionally charged attitude, similar to his famous gangster and mobster crime films like Goodfellas from 1990, Casino from 1995, The Departed from 2006, and most recently The Irishman from 2019. But this film does not fit the large-scale historical epic genre like the book or like the director is comfortable with. Instead, this filmic treatment of brutal American exploitation is mostly focused on the marriage between a white, downtrodden man and a wealthy, native young woman who gradually find each other on opposite sides of this devastating story. Killers of the Flower Moon is a quiet, methodical, and patient Western that doesn't rely on crescendos of music or emotion. Because it takes its time and gives such a stripped-down, laconic interpretation of David Grant's book, this film's narrative energy is not one of a forensic mystery thriller. It's more like a funereal eulogy with dignified honesty. Being almost three and a half hours long, this film has a demanding running time, and it packs a heartbreaking punch. But because it's so long and has such a consistently restrained energy, the interest in the story slows down noticeably in the last 45 minutes. This could be more accessible to a wider array of audiences if it were shorter, but we should all be thankful this chapter of 20th century America has made it to the big screen. I thought this film tells its story expertly, and I hope many more people make the time to see it. For Flix at 48, I'm KCT Allen.